They're talking about environmental justice. Well, this is stop number one, for sure. We're going to talk to the mayor of Imperial Beach about the letter they sent to the president asking for a state of emergency. Coming up in just a minute, but first say hello to Mr. Brandon Stone. Hello, Brandon. Well, there are major changes to the face of soccer in America. Messi on his way will tell you the creative way that MLS has come up with to get him here. All that when we see in sports. Now, let's go out to the land of cotton, candy, and pet animals with Mark Mathers. Hello there! Yes, we are live at the San Diego County Fair. Get out there! But I'm here. So, that's an adverb, right, Kristen? I get out there, but I, I should say get out here. It's so confusing right now, but we're going to have a big time, and the KUSI News at 4 starts right now. This is Good Evening San Diego. We are, we are happy you are here. Good evening, San Diego. I'm Hunter Sowards. And I'm Ray for Wagle and for Logan Burns. Thank you for joining us. Our top story at 4 o'clock. The San Diego City Council will vote on the unsafe camping ordinance next week. If passed, it would make it illegal to set up tents on public sidewalks when shelter is available. It's getting mixed reaction, both support and pushback. KUSI's Teresa Sardina, she is live in the East Village, where concern there continues, Teresa. Good evening. It was quite an interesting day here. You see so many trucks cleaning crews, just clean up fecal matter from the streets and spraying the sidewalks of the urine. I'm not sure if this is a routine or if it's because of the Padres game today, but I was out here in the East Village throughout the day talking to the unhoused about the proposed ordinance. And a lot of them that I was speaking to, I was trying to speak to, they were saying that it's just moving the problem. I spoke to one sober man and he says he likes the idea of the safe sleeping sites. He says hopefully these safe sleeping sites will have counseling and treatment included, but he was wondering why these safe sleeping sites were implemented years ago. There's not enough jail space for them. Where are they going to go? You're going to take people who are already at risk that could recover, that could get off the streets, uh, that, that could become productive, useful members of society again and you're going to make them less comfort, comfortable and more at risk because now they won't have a tent. They're going to be sleeping out in the environment. It's just going to be worse overall. Wednesday in the East Village, speaking with the unhoused about the proposed homeless encampment ban on public property. Up for a San Diego City Council vote June 13th at 17th and Island on the bridge over I-5. Do you have family that could help you get on your feet? No, all my family's dead. I'm literally like the last of my bloodline. This man currently living on the street doesn't want to show his face. He's currently working small jobs. I got to make money so that I can get a van. The car I have, I can't use over here. So I'm financially hurting right now, yeah. And how long have you been experiencing this? Since the pandemic, being real. That was nonsense. Let's kill America's economy over a sneeze. He says he would be okay to move to a safe sleeping site. The plan established under the proposed ordinance, asking where are the sites he will go right now. Telling us he's sober, he doesn't suffer from addiction. He says the majority of the homeless on the streets are. This isn't a homeless problem. This is literally a drug addiction problem. We need to decriminalize drug use, decriminalize possession, increase funding for treatment, take that money out of the prison system, which has become a business. There's the pharmaceutical companies that push the opioids. Residents parking to get to work or home, walking by encampments. Walking to my car, I have to have safety for myself. Um, you know, I have pepper spray. Uh, it's just very dangerous. Christina Tafoya works in the East Village. I can only park my car in so many areas. One time I even came um, after work, there was a gentleman head on my front tire, laying on my hood, and unfortunately that same night I got a parking ticket because I couldn't park close enough to the curb due to the encampment. It's our time to clean it up. So we're going to do one of two things. We're going to sweep it under the rug, right? Or we're going to address the real issue. And I know what it's like to drive a Mercedes. I know what it's like to live in a gated community. I know what it's like to have it not be my problem. I do know people out here and it has been my problem before. It's my problem right now. And the real problem is not that we're homeless or the housing or what. It's that 95% of the people, 90% of the people that are out here 
are addicted to drugs. And because of that, they can't get jobs. Because they got a criminal history, they can't get jobs. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? We have confirmed with council member Stephen Whitburn that they have two safe sleeping sites on the calendar that one is opening up in July and the other around September or October. But when I was speaking with the unhoused today, they feel that it's a little backwards. They feel that these safe sleeping sites should be here right now before an ordinance passes. And of course, KUSI will stay on top of that San Diego City Council vote up on Tuesday, June 13th. Reporting in the East Village. I'll send it back to you. Yeah, Teresa, a powerful perspective there. I think it's important to note we hear from those who this is directly impacting, and they're raising some real concerns right now. If this goes into place before those safe sleeping sites are opened, where do they go? All right, Teresa, we'll check back in with you soon. Thanks so much.